So it's really difficult to price your work, especially when you're first starting out. Um, but furthermore, sometimes you're going to deal with people that don't really respect you and can be even insulting. So what inspired this video today was a message I actually got through a text from a potential client. Now on the surface, I don't think it sounds like he's being rude or maybe to the uninitiated people that have not dealt with this for a long time. But the reality is he was actually being quite offensive to me, I think. Now, yes, I am reading between the lines, but let's do an analysis and you guys decide on your own what you think of this message. So it starts out fine. He says, hi, came across your info on Google. Might you be available for two to three hours tomorrow night to photograph a party at my house in Beverly Wood? Um, and then he left his name. So I'm gonna leave that out of it, obviously. So this is good because he gave me the address, not the address, but the cities that he's in. This is just, I believe, south of Beverly Hills. It's a good area. Um, so keep that in mind. Early on in my career, I had a both humiliating and infuriating experience in which I show up to a job and the guy on the phone really just would not stop haggling and would just really devalue me and just got me to concede like way too much money. And when I show up at the house, it's a $10 million home. And this is not an exaggeration. It's a $10 million home, at least in Bel Air, or I believe it was Bel Air. This is a really, really nice neighborhood in Los Angeles. It's one of the nicest neighborhoods. Stung quite a bit. And I've always priced based on what I felt was fair, not so much what I thought I could get or what I arbitrarily or systematically decided photography and my photography was worth. I priced what I felt was right for people. And so I'm negotiated with endlessly. I show up to the job. It's a gigantic mansion. I'm not feeling good. I priced it like it was an event. It was a wedding. The way they spoke to me, it sounded like they were lower income. And it's appalling. And it gets worse, actually. I'm shooting this ceremony in this backyard wedding, except it's a giant mansion. And during the wedding, the bride's speech, she referenced her husband negotiating down with me. And immediately, that should sound like, what? That's weird. It's a way she said it too, about him being such a good negotiator. If you don't believe me, ask our photographer. And everyone laughed, and I was like, I'm not laughing, you know. Uh, what did I do? I did the job, I shot, I made sure I was shooting the best work I ever could, as always. Um, but to this day, it, it's quite upsetting. And so if you can take a tip away from this, it's maybe check the venue, check the budget of the, <laughs> try to assess what the budget of the entire event might be. Some people will spend $50,000 putting on a, an event and then act like they can only spend $100 on photography and it's not true. Other people will just misrepresent their, uh, their <laughs> you know, their, uh, they try to portray themselves as less wealthy than they really are in order to get a deal. And then you feel, you feel like an asshole. Um, you know, I'm a modest person. I, I'm very minimal and I don't require a lot. And my goal in life is not to get really wealthy, but I know how I live. And then I show up to people living a lifestyle I may never, ever, ever get to live. And they're quibbling with me over a hundred dollars. It hurts. And it's not cool. It's really not cool. I said, hi, how many people will be attending? Do you just need one ph photographer? Or do you need video as well? I always try to make referrals to my videography friends, but eventually I think I'm gonna start offering more video in-house. Yes, just one photographer, no video needed, 30 people attending event. Now, why did I ask how many people are attending? Sometimes people misrepresent the type of event. They will tell you, oh, you know, I'm having a little party in my backyard. And so you think a low budget, small party. And then you get there and it has corporate sponsors, it has 500 attendees, and it's in a $20 million mansion. And you priced your photography according to a small uh, event. I have two different pricing, which I'll be very upfront about. I'm sure people want to know. I price 200 an hour for smaller events, 250 an hour for the large political events I do, uh, corporate events, etc. Uh, I do have a two hour minimum and basic usage rights are included. So I tell him, I did 
I, I always do try to toy around with my rates, but I'm not wishy-washy and I don't yo-yo. I'm very consistent, and, but I do need to kind of workshop ideas because I have not been happy with making $400 on a job. You have to remember a two hour small event really isn't just going to be two hours, then you have to edit, and you can't really book a larger event in its place if you take that job. And so I haven't been a fan, but I've been getting a lot of those lately. But it's for tomorrow, but I decided I'm going to try something. I'm going to ask, uh, I'm going to offer him $500 for two hours, but $600 if he does three. So I tell him that. All images are edited and provided to you in high resolution via downloadable gallery. Turnaround time is one week, but usually I'm able to finish them much sooner. Please let me know if you have any additional questions. If you'd like to go ahead and book, I just need a deposit of half via Venmo to save the date. Also, pre please provide me with the exact time, address, and how formal the event will be, and we're good to go. That's really all I do need. Um, and obviously your name. I did get his first name. Here's his response. Unfortunately, it is too expensive, but thanks anyway. Now, unfortunately, is it is too expensive is different than unfortunately, it's above my budget, I'm sorry. He's telling me I'm too expensive. And you can give them the benefit of the doubt and chalk it up to poor choice of words, that kind of thing. But I've done this for a long time and I can really see what's coming. But I don't take anything personal and what I say is, okay, best I could do is waive my travel fee and do two hours for 400. If that doesn't work, no worries. So at this point, he could be very diplomatic. He could just say, oh, I'm sorry, I think it's still too above, it's too mo more than I can afford or whatever. He chooses not to. He says, sorry, but I've already been offered $250, but thanks anyway. What people who don't really value photography often forget is that photography is not a commodity. It's not like buying an iPad. If you go to Walmart, Target, Costco, or to the Apple store to buy an iPad, you're gonna get the same iPad. But photography is not photography. And so when they get a quote from a student for $75 for a four hour job, and then you quote $800, they're gonna act so surprised. Like, how dare you <laughs> quote me that? Um, and it's because they don't really value your work. The reality is that some of these people never actually even look at your work. They just write down a bunch of different photographers' phone numbers, they call them, or they just go down the Yelp page or whatever they found you on and they just call and say, hey, how much will this cost? And they're just gonna go with the lowest amount. And they never even look at your work. So they don't understand that there's a skill gap that goes along with that price gap. So there's no room for negotiation. I didn't leave room for negotiation myself. And 250, and there's different ways you can respond to this. On a bad day in the past, I would say something, like if they're like, if you, I've given gr much better rates when I was a younger photographer. And sometimes they're just, their expectation is so absurd that I could not help myself and say something like, I'd be happy to look, ask around, I can ask my students if any of them are interested in shooting your job. You know, it's a bit snarky, but you know, that's, if that's your budget, that's your budget. I'm not going to shoot your job for $75 or something. Problem is when people are really rude to you, there's a lot on the line for you, but not for them. If you're rude to someone, or even a smartass, <laughs> or whatever, or even if you stand up your, for yourself, there's always the risk that they can leave you a bad review on Yelp or whatever, and that can ruin a business, and they know that. People know that, and that's why they act the way they act, unfortunately. Now, the ultimate goal, I think, is to have screw you money where you can say no to people and you don't need the work. Uh, but most working photographers are not going to get there. It, it's very difficult. I have at times, I do now because I've done this long enough, where I, even when I need the money, my pride is more important to me. I shouldn't say pride. My self-worth is more important to me than getting the money. So if it's an $800 job, Perhaps I'll make some concessions, but I'm never going to do that job for $400. I'm not going to do it for $200. And unfortunately, there are people that will, and they do bring down the industry, but you can't worry about those people. You have to do what's right for yourself. So earlier in my career, I had a soft spot for people, and I still do. But at this point, I'm just not willing to make major concessions unless I truly, truly, truly know that you're someone who needs it. 
Um, but early on in my career, I would get people that would just like be like, please, can you work with me? Um, it's, too, it's out of my budget. And I will give them like the greatest offer I've ever given anyone. Like I'll go from $500 to $150. And they'd be like, oh, that's too much. <laughs> and some people, I, you just, you can't win. Now there are some people that are gonna call and I know right away they're time wasters and I'm not gonna book. Uh, one great example I love is the person who calls me and you give them the most competitive rate possible and they're like, what? That's, and they'll insult you. They'll be like, that, that's way too much money. And then you're like, what did you think photography was gonna cost you? Like when you've given them like a 75% reduction in the rate for whatever reason and then they're like, what? Some people, I don't know what they're doing. They're not conscious. They're living lives where they're just acting and they're not really thinking about anything. But all I decided to do is say, sounds good. Uh, just leave it. Unfortunately, you're always at risk. You can't really be snarky with clients because, <laughs> you know, I take my professionalism seriously, but I also take my self-worth seriously. And I do not want to devalue myself by caving. He, first of all, he didn't leave me the opportunity to cave and nor would I have taken it. Although maybe he thought in his mind by saying, oh, I've been offered 250, that I would then be like, oh, okay. But I was not, you know? Anyone that's gonna shoot a two to, to three out, he didn't specify, but two to three hour job for 250 is not gonna be at the same level as me. Let's just be real. Um, my competitors in Los Angeles, there is some that keep undercutting me and it is frustrating, but they're not undercutting me like this. I mean, they're maybe charging 180 an hour instead of 200 or 250. Um, and then they're making larger concessions for big jobs, like big corporate events where maybe it's a multi-day conference. And so a lot of money is on the table. And so making concessions, like doing it for less, you're still making a lot of money. Um, but yeah, this is, just here's a lesson I really want people to take from this is that A, sometimes your self-worth is just more important. B, you want to be able to leave yourself open for negotiation, but you don't want to devalue your work as well. And one way you can do that is rather than pricing one lump sum, like this is the cost of all of my services, is that you itemize things. So that way, if they do ask if you can work with them on the price, they're going to be making concessions as well as yourself. So basically, you price out your hourly rate, your cost for deliverables, you, your high resolution images, your social media sized images, etc. And so that if they want a reduction in the rate, you can point to what they can choose not to include in your services. Now, some people are just going to try to negotiate you down in general without playing ball and without being willing to do any, make any concessions, I would avoid that kind of thing. You don't want to devalue your work. Make sense? All right, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, I got this message and I'm like, eh, I wanna make a video about this one. So let me know what you guys think. Uh, do you think I'm getting it right? Do you think I'm overanalyzing? To you, maybe that it does sound like it and I will concede it is possible, but I've done this a long time and I, I kind of have gotten used to certain patterns and this is a pretty common one.